Hello guys, let's go over May AI HL exam questions and see what students have to be aware to study for AI HL. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so AI focuses shallow but wide range of subjects. You can think of sub studying AI as uh, how to learn Python quickly, you know. You do not need to know how, uh, too much why the theorem works should know the particular theorem is necessary for a certain problem. For example, AA students will be asked to work on the proof of a certain theorem, such as why the derivative of sine is a cosine. You don't get to differentiate the sine as a cosine unless you understand the, the, principle of, the first principle of a sine. But for AI students, they must be able to execute uh, derivative quickly. Less focus on the proof, therefore, is compensated on more range, wider, wider, broader range of a service. Personally, I think it's a bit much, uh, but I wish they could lift up the complex number part. But anyways, you know, it's, it, it is what it is, so we got to get to it. So I want you to think of learning the AI as learning the, uh, the programming language. At first, you know, you don't need to know the too much details. You are being a programmer rather than developer. Um, what I encourage you to cultivate uh, during AI study is an observer mindset. You should be able to perceive the fish in the river amidst the vast size of the uh, lake. What do I mean? Uh, AI question often comes in lengthy paragraph style formats. Don't be intimidated by these. Train yourself on, uh, to efficiently identify the key elements or fish in the problem. Let's examine the example below. When you look at the problem, I want you to realize it is something about the quadratic function. When you look at the quadratic function, what do we have to remind ourselves? Concavity. So now, as you can see, I got the negative 4.75. It's going to be concave down. I'm sure it could be something about the maximum minimum, therefore. So it's going to be likely to optimization problem. So what value do you have to be careful about? Yes, the axis of symmetry where you already know it's something with the negative b over 2a. I want you to know the keyword. Uh, I, I want you to know the keyword only. Here, I want you to realize I don't even bother to look at all the specific player throws the basketball, etc. I don't. I haven't even read them. The height of the basketball, etc. I don't need it. I only need that is essentially talking about the concave down quadratic function. You need to have this attitude of, poof, you know, eyeballing. So rolling one's eyes, poof attitude is sort of the mindset that I want you to have on AI. I want you to embody this poof attitude. Glance at the question and go, aha, the examiner is asking me this, or he's trying to trick me with this, but I know I'm not going to fall into it because I already, I already know what exactly the question is going to be like. But I already know what comes next. That's what I mean by being the observer. Let's have a look at the next question. Based on the information presented in the table, we can predict that the up upcoming topic will resolve around the chi-square independence test. Even better, the question has already provided us with the hypothesis. Now, we know we will have to work with the several elements like the contingency table, degree of freedom, uh, and the, the use of a calculator. Although we, use pref we usually prefer using the p-value, the question specifically asks us to use the, stat uh, the chi-square static. Therefore, our focus should shift tower towers to the uh, statics and determine whether it falls in the acceptance or critical, re critical region to make decision. Remember, your role is to observe and anticipate the unfolding steps simply by examining the table in the question. I'm not keen on reading all the paragraphs of a company that owns many restaurants. I'm not going to be uh, fooled by that. What I want you to do is to know exactly what algorithm you need to choose as a programmer and just copy and paste from the stack experience change. You don't need to know every detail of what parameter they have used. Okay? Sure, let's have a look at this problem. What should we think as an observer by looking at this problem? I want you to try yourself. What I would think, uh, if I were you, is to have the mindset of a poof. PFF, poof. Poof, the examiner is trying to check my theoretical uh, probability understanding with additional law and conditional probability and complement. Hence, focusing on the simultaneous equation by converting them into either single event or intersection is the key of this problem. Be the eagle. I want you to be the eagle. Be an observer who knows where the fish will jump so that you can catch them. That's what the attitude of the AI student should be. You don't need to know, again, the details of that law, but you should be, no, you should be able to find that uh, find the uh, hyperlink, find the algorithm to be able to execute it. That's what's required. 
uh, voila, the financial sequence and series are the central in topic one because they encourage you to not only model the complex problem into the concise equation, but also enhance your proficiency in using the calculators effectively. When approaching problems related to this topic, adopt the observer's perspective by considering, considering the following. Adapt TVM server for compounding. Recognize the need to adjust the TVM server for compound quarterly situation where the number of periods will vary too. Utilize the suitable equation forms for depreciation. Understand uh, that when dealing with the depreciation problems, it is beneficial to set up an equation using the 1 minus P over 100 instead of using P as an unknown. This approach ensures that the answer is easily readable after utili utilizing the server. In summary, being the observer here involves foreseeing the adjustment and the and approaches required to efficiently tackle the problems related to the financial sequence and series in topic one. Graph theory, next question, is indeed a crucial topic in AI, are by challenging, uh, challenging, challenging uh, uh, nature due to its distinctive com uh, nature compared to the other familiar topics. It's very unfamiliar, right? We haven't really touched graph theory until you become the... Uh, uh, grade 11. When tackling problems related to the graph theory, being an observer is key to unraveling its complexities. Directed graph is the first thing I see, and I'm sure it's going. To, you should recognize that the problem may involve the directed graph, implying an asymmetry in the relationship between the elements. So you're going to have asymmetric, very likely, uh, often adjacent symmetrics. And then the second thing I should I want you to observe is that the adjacent symmetrics and multiple multi-step roots anticipate questions related to the adjacent symmetries particularly focusing on multi-step routes and determining the number of steps needed. Maintaining the poof attitude, right? Being an observer, which isn't about being careless, but rather about confidently anticipating the problem's core aspect, will help approach graph theory problems with a clearer, a more clear perspective. It is about embracing the challenge while remaining the observant and strategic. So let's have a look at this uh, question here. Indeed, creating the hypothesis in problem like this can be more challenging than the, the previous one because they already gave you the hypothesis. But uh, being the keen observer remains crucial. Uh, the first thing is that you have to realize that it's going to involve the uniform distribution hypothesis. Recognize the likelihood of working with the uniform distribution hypothesis, especially in tabular distributions like this. So observed frequency calculation will be utilized with the equal proportion of a quarter to calculate the observed frequency. Then uh, understand the preference of using the p-value as a decision criterion, even if the question mentioned using the test aesthetic. Well, here they just gave you the test uh, the the what is it? The critical value as as well as the level of significance. Now, of course, we're going to prefer the p-value unless, unless they specify to use which value. Okay, by embodying the observer's attitude and focusing on the details that unravels the problem, navigating through the uh, intricacies become a more manageable task when you already know what is going to be there. You're looking at the, uh, what is it, the... Um, observe the frequency and then you need to get the expected frequency from the equal distribution of a quarter and then you know that ah, it's going to be the goodness of fit and we're good to go. Alright, I think this is a lovely problem. This is a lovely problem because it puts the challenge on AI students with not just with the complex number but also with the use of calculator. You need to think with multifaceted, you need to think with the multifaceted approaches in this one. When you work with this problem, you already know it is something with the sum of signs, hence it should be working with the sum of all the form and work with the imaginary part. However, when you work with the calculator, you will, re you will realize it, it keeps getting you an error when you work with the older form in degree. From this, even if you did not experience this, right, you need to use your de uh, deductive thinking to reconsider with the radian measure and see if you don't have error anymore. In fact, we have to convert in the radian from 60 degree to pi over 3 and from 10 degree to pi over 18. Be the observer and when there is the obstacle, you sometimes have to use the deductive thinking, which is more uh, required in AA. We cannot have all three past questions in the AI exam. Uh, absolutely, this problem. Um, absolutely, this problem captures the challenges related to the complex numbers and calculator use, uh, providing the multifaceted learning experience for AI students. So make sure you understand that even if there is something unseen before, we can manage them. So working it by hands, okay, is often giving you some uh, more clue than just relying 100% on the calculator.
very nice problem that shows emphasis on AI problem. Worthy problems to more concise expression. It is something about the related rates, as you can imagine. So, he, but here it does not say that it's actually from the topic five related rates. So you have to pick up which topic is going to be. I'm not interested in about the spherical balloon. I'm not interested about inflation. I'm only in, interested about its shape. And if I if I'm able to find the expression and be able to perform the implicit differentiation. So since it's something about the related rates, we, so we would get the expression of the volume of a sphere first, and then you know you want to use the rate of change of volume because this is given, for which you would have to do the implicit differentiation with respect to t. Then with the given rates of volume, you can find the unknown rates, unknown rates of the radius by just substituting. Again, most of the equations in AI actually fundamentally comes down to linear equation because here only the unknown is the what is it the, the rate of the radius and then the rest of them must be given or implicitly given in the information so that we can just plug it in solving like the linear equation make sure you know how to convert from the word equation to the uh, to the uh, concise uh, form so that you can differentiate with respect to time t easily all right, so let's have a look at this problem here what can you think of when we see this problem what's the observer's mindset Yes, simple and confidence interval, a simple and confidence interval for the population mean. So it must be something about the Z interval or T interval. What should we, what should it be? Very good. It, it's got only with the samples, hence it's going to be something to do with the t test or t distribution. And please be able to distinguish the uh, difference between the unbiased estimator for the variance and sample variance. Also, remember that both z and t test must come from the population that is distributed normally. This is a well. This is a very explained nicely in AI textbook from Hodder. Right, previously the Cambridge Press. So if you want to uh, dig in with the topic four, I think it's a great book, right? But knowing already what the uh, test is going to be based on the information is also very crucial in topic four. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. Again, a very good example to indicate that algebra is also essential in AI. You cannot solve everything by calculator, even if the paper is 100% ba calculator-based questions. Often they, they are going to ask you to solve exact, find the exact solution. That means you have to stop using the calculator and solve things manually. You must remember to use algebra well and correctly in AI as well. Working with a reasonable level of integration by substitution is the key in this problem. Please make sure you practice with problems that require by algebra and by hands. You have to get used to solving by hands and manually because often it gives you more efficient uh, way to solve the problem. This paper 2 problem extends my point of uh, from the previous question. Make sure you're able to work with the algebra. On topic 1, complex number or, or matrix algebra often required to solve by hand. Topic 2, essential functions such as a linear, quadratic, polynomial, exponential, logarithmic, or trigonometric functions have distinct features that could be solved by hand much more easily much more, uh, much more easily than the use of a calculator. For example, for finding out the horizontal asymptote of exponential function, I'm not going to sketch the function because I know the constant part of the function is going to be the horizontal asymptote. We must be the observer. We must already know uh, what is likely to be the answer uh, when we see a problem like that. Topic 3, needless to say, with the trigonometric equation and identities as well as the trigonometric function, sketching as well as the vector require you to solve things manually rather than using the calculator. Topic 5, of course, calculus requires extensive use of your manual work rather than the calculator to solve problems more efficiently. This problem here also asks you to how to work with the matrix, solving the characteristics equation that require the quadratic equation. And often those problems can be solved much more quicker, much more quickly using by hands rather than the use of a calculator. Please don't forget uh, to give meaning of your result as well at the towards the end, the end of the end of, end of the qu questions here, because each parameters after having achieved them. And you got to talk about the meaning of it. Okay, let's have a look at this now. The final problem from the paper two. I want you to remember why Poisson distribution. So as a as a point of as a uh, as a observer, okay, I want you to read this question carefully. And something with the hypothesis testing that required the Poisson distribution. And I want you to remember as soon as you see that problem. You must remember why Poisson distribution often more difficult than the other distribution, such as the binomial or normal distribution, to work with type 1 or 2 error. Firstly, as an observer, you should already know. It is this random variable. Hence, uh, hence you know the subtle difference of less than or less than equal to could change a big difference for the critical value, hence the critical region. And also, in order to work 
in order to find the critical value, a binomial or normal distribution allow it to use the calculator to find the inverse distribution quickly. Whereas the, for the Poisson, the, the Poisson distribution, we often have to deal with the n server to find the value. And make sure you're able to use the n server for the Poisson distribution, for which often uh, the domain error occurs. Please know how to get rid of the error. You can actually look at the last minute revision for the AI and, this, and check the discussion how to find those values. We should have this mindset as an observer when we encounter pro the problem as a, as a, a ready for the exam uh, AI student. I want you to be the observer. I want you to be the eagle. I want you to know where the fish is going to jump despite our by a lengthy prose paragraphs here. I don't care about the gardener in the local park suggest exact exactly, exactly. I don't care. When I look at it, I know it is going to be it's going to be the Poisson distribution. I know it is going to be something with the mean parameter. I know it's going to be something with the time interval that's going to bother or the area interval. I know it's going to be something with the type to error. So I know it is going to be with the what is it, the critical region given the true distribution. Type one error is gonna be then talk, talking about the uh the critical region given the new distribution. So all those things must come into our hand uh, before even reading the problem. By looking at the snare, you already know how to crawl to the solution. So the observer's mindset and poof mindset are invaluable in AI study. Being able to foresee the unfolding of a problem from a single keyword and maintaining a confident yet rigorous approach is the key to success. It is about the striking the balance between the intuition and precision, aligning with the essence of AI study. Okay, that's pretty much it for me today. Happy studying, and I'll see you next time with more uh, resources that I can provide for the AI students. That's it for me today. See you next time.